Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Marcus. I'm GT. GT, great teacher. <laughs> I'll take <laughs> it. Whatever, that is. Man, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, in this video, we're going to jump in on uh, data pipelines. We talked about the whole data pipeline in the last video. We're going to talk about the collection stage. And really, in order to start at the beginning of collection, you got to talk about the use case, which is that every data application or sort of data pipeline is dictated by the end use case. We talked about the outputs is sort of the final result of a data pipeline. So those automations, visualizations, you know, system uh, integrations, like those are the outputs of data. And so in order to really meet the needs of your output, you've got to go all the way back to the beginning at the collection stage and think about what data you need to accomplish your output. So we're going to start there. An example system that I love to talk about, of course, is the Tesla. And the Tesla has a bunch of inputs in order to create a really cool output. The simple output, like Marcus talked about, uh, would be driving from point A to point B without airbags deploying and everybody is safe. Uh, but what data inputs are there? What data is being collected uh, on the inbound of you know a, a self-driving car to make those decisions? Sensors, radar, I'm reading right here, cameras, GPS, accelerometers, uh, the cloud, which may be uh, you know, traffic conditions, weather conditions, et cetera. Those are all components that are being input. Think about it being collected by a central brain system. And that's really what we're talking about here, except we're talking about it from a networking perspective. It's interesting actually to make that comparison because you think about, you know, even what you just said is like sort of the output of a self-driving car is like to move from A to B as efficiently and safely as possible. And in some way, like, obviously, there's a lot of complexity to that. But in some ways, like when you compare that to the open ended goal of networking, like in some ways, network, like the output of networking seems more difficult because every customer and operator has different expectations, like the, the types of data is so different, um, like the expectations of an operator are so different. It's, it makes for an interesting comparison. I, I don't know if I'd say networking is more difficult, but in some ways, it certainly is. Yeah, I think one of the difficulties is just think about measurement. Again, I made kind of a joking but real example. If you get from A to B without being seriously injured, we'll call it a success. Yeah. <laughs> in networking, what's the measurement? Because, you know, in my previous employer it was all about looking at the experience of end devices. You know, is this device working well? And that's not an easy thing to do in networking, to just actually have the data to know if what you're doing is a good thing. Uh, that's pretty tough. And and that, you know, the whole adage is garbage in, garbage out. So we've talked yeah. about, uh, you know, everybody always talks about data, you know, good data in means good data out. Uh, but a lot of what we're talking about in this video is, uh, and the next video, is is there's compromises for that data in, that collection process. Yeah, and, and there's also the, the part of that data collection, which is, um, you know, like you just said, I think good data in allows you to have good outputs. But I think there's even a challenge in that, which is like good data in allows you to represent the thing that you wanted to represent with the data. So so like in a self-driving car example, it's like deconstructing individual objects in video, video or radar or whatever. So it's like, oh, that's a stop sign. That's a person. That's a, you know, dog walking across the street. Like there's the deconstruction of the individual things, but then there's the context of deciding what to do with those things and the conclusions that are drawn from the fact that you know, your good data in hopefully can allow you to make an output that's out. And I think that's where the complexity actually is, is like the collection of some data that represents a thing is not quite as difficult, but it's the final, you know, the final thing that's more difficult. Yeah, the context thing, you know, I know we talk a lot here, but just this, the car example again is, you know, have you ever been driving down a highway and you see a stop sign, except it's for a road that's kind of beside your road? You know, what would a self-driving car do in that situation? The, the, the example, the word you use I really like, Marcus, is context, right? Mm -hmm. is, is, hey, if one user is having a big problem, is that the right context to make a change for everybody? You know, at what right. point do you start making some of these other decisions? So, and in net yeah, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. I just, you know, I th think about that, like in networking, you know, you almost have to go back and redefine what a network's, or not redefine, but you got to actually define and, and characterize what a network's there for, like connecting devices, 
you know, with security and giving them enough performance and bandwidth, you know, reliably to deliver the applications that they need. And that's maybe overly simplified, but that's pretty much the goal. So like you almost now you got to think about how do we quantify and measure those things, you know, so that we can sort of actually measure it and do it well. And even though we have those definitions and, you know, you sort of look at the metrics that allow you to measure those, like those characteristics of a network, there's really lots of different ways to collect that data. So, you know, sort of break it down into three categories. The first one would be client devices, like the applications and agents that run on them. And then the other one would be like different types of overlay um, systems in a network. And then there's the network infrastructure itself that's already there. Yeah, I mean, starting with the first one, client agents, you know, which is just software, a lot of times called an agent that would be on a phone or mobile device usually. Um, those are, there's problematic from a few different ways. There's pros and cons to everything. The upside is you can get data right from the device as best as possible. Um, the downside is, is that some devices like this phone, the iPhone, actually doesn't allow a lot of data access to say the Wi-Fi chip in here. So if you wanted to know what this Wi-Fi chip is doing and its performance, you actually can't really figure that out. Uh, so that's kind of a downside. Yeah, and another problem is even just getting people to install it in the first place, even if the device can give it to you, doesn't mean that users will install the app or the agent based on your you know, sort of organization and your, you know, your network flow and use case. Yeah, sometimes they can be put in inside of another app. So if you have your favorite retail shopping app, like, you know, box, you know, store that you actually walk into, they can actually yeah. put some performance in that. Uh, you know, they can actually get some of that out of it. Uh, but that's, again, a pretty corner case as opposed to, you know, universities or carpeted space. So client agents, right. at least in my experience, cl client agents sound really good, but their real life implementation of them is actually quite, quite low. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. So then the second one is overlays. And there's actually several different types of overlays. There's sort of packet captures that can be like distributed or centralized. There's, um, there's like, you know, dedicated collectors that, you know, can be installed that are going to go and use SNMP or APIs to pull different network infrastructure, network services like DHCP and AAA. Um, you know, and then they might even like receive flow data from, you know, ports or switches that's just mirrored data that they can use DPI. So there's lots of different types of collectors. And then sort of thinking from a Wi-Fi perspective, there's your classic overlays like security and sensor overlays that are going to monitor and measure from this third party, you know, overlay perspective. Yeah. And Extreme actually has that product. In fact, it has one of the oldest, um, products the most mature i would say even most products that have been around <laughs> yeah, oldest is, is oldest is a bad word <laughs> it does sound bad in special technology but it is actually it's uh it's been quite amazing to watch its journey but it's called air defense it used to Robust, be its own yeah. co company back in early 2000s uh, and was you know through acquisition extreme has it and it's uh, quite powerful not only from security which is what it, that's the defense part but from just data analytics and marcus talked about you know an overlay it's a physical you know, access point looking device that you would physically install. That's why it's called an overlay. It's actually not serving a client device, but it's just, it's sitting there collecting, just like some vendors have a physical box that would, you know, wired box that would collect data going through it. You know, it would kind of take a, a, a copy of the data and do some sort of a processing for it. That's why they're called overlays because they're not actually part of the active infrastructure, which is next. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think even, like, you know, the whole theme is that like every type of collector has constraints. And so it's like even even the overlay has the constraints of like it's it's extra equipment to install, but it offloads processing from the infrastructure, you know, like you said, so there's something good and, and something bad about it. But, you know, to your point about the infrastructure, you know, what's great about infrastructure is, you know, it's already installed. Everyone has it. You know, there's kind of a sunk cost to it, which means you've already paid for it. It's already there. And you'd love to be able to take advantage of the fact that you've got all these assets deployed already there, you know, to collect data from. Yeah, but there's also that trade off is that, you know, I have customers that have things that they installed five years ago that, yeah. as you've pointed out to me in the past, that that was actually developed seven years ago. Um, that they actually just aren't as capable of collecting the information. They don't have the processor and memory to collect. So it's not, it's not that companies like Extreme don't want to provide services like deep packet inspection on older devices. It's that they're physically not capable of doing it. 
Yeah, I mean, it's like the, these devices are already in line to traffic, which is great because they have a perspective that can already see all the goods. But like they're also installed to serve a function. Like, you know, you think about access points are layer one and two devices. And so, you know, you start talking about capturing layer seven data and modern APs can all do that. But, you know, there's going to be some impact to it. And so there's, again, it's just a constraint, you know, but to your point about sort of the the collection of, of data and you think about devices that were designed seven years ago, like the way that machine learning and artificial intelligence and even data collection as a whole has changed in seven years is like profound. And so the devices that we manufacture today and design today are just very different because they're thinking about data collection differently. Yeah, I have customers that are saying, hey, GT, I want, you know, this access point, which is, you know, the, the latest and greatest that we have, even though they're actually not buying it for the Wi-Fi capabilities, they're buying it because they know that the processor and memory two, three, four, five years from now uh, will actually be serving them better for the data that they want, for the features and functions that they want. So they're actually uh, buying that power now instead of you know buying you know the lower end access point that would serve their needs from a Wi-Fi perspective, but not continued data analysis or data collection as we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. In, in previous videos, we've talked about the cost of doing you know, of hardware and cloud. And if you have infinite budgets, which no customer has, that you can have a lot of power. But I think the point of what we're getting at in this video is there's constraints. There's decisions that people have to make on the vendor side and that you make as a consumer as to what what you're going to, to purchase and where there's trade-offs. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about in the next video. We have this concept of processing units. And if you, you know, there's a, there's a total amount and we're going to say, you know, where do you want your power at within your device, um, which I think should make for a pretty interesting conversation. Yeah, it'll be fun as always. So this is part one of part two for the data collection uh, phase of the data pipeline. So thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Awesome. Thanks, Marcus. Thanks, man. See ya.